So I thought I'd make a video of the work I'm doing to get these proximity sensors wired up. I'm not sure how interesting it is, but it does give a good sense of how much time it takes to get something like this done, uh, which is, I don't know, I think the wiring for me has taken more time than I expected. All right, so yeah, here's the method I've been using to deal with these um, sensor cables. They're shielded. And so I need to pull the cables out of the the shield. So anyway, here I am carefully taking the uh, outer insulation off. It's super fussy. You gotta feel it. And once you feel the knife hit the braid, you gotta stop. And then I kind of twist it to see how well I've done there. Missed a spot. And then when I have a good circumference, I just score the Pull it off. Sweet. All right. So then, uh, basically, I come down to this end and then just kind of try to loosen the. Sh There's a foil sheath underneath this webbed sheath, and I'm just trying to loosen the web sheath so I hold on to the wire and the the foil sheath, and I just try to scoot it up. And then you you make a lot of slack here. I'm just trying to bring some slack up to this apex here. And then I use a pick to just sort of pick out a hole here. I'm just trying to expose that foil sheath. And make a make a hole big enough to pull those wires through. Alright. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just try not to break too many of those strands. So now I have to pierce that foil. It's again super fuzzy. And try not to hurt the, the, the insulation on the inner wires. Alright. And then I can gently get underneath one of the wires. Try to coax it out. Did anyone say super fuzzy? Yeah. <clears throat> so, there's one. One down, three to go. So yeah, ultimately that's the the cost benefit. <laughs> it's like if you if I just kept those uh, fittings and uh, brought them into the enclosure that way, I wouldn't have to do this. So I'm not sure which way is better. Get that blue one. <clears throat> All right, so there's four. So now I just kind of hold it here and I'm trying to tear the foil out. Usually it comes pretty easy. And so I just toss that. And now I just want to wind up this braid, tighten it down. So I'm going to solder a little pigtail onto this and then this the pigtail will be what I take to my grounding block. 
So I'm just going to leave it a little long now. And that's pretty much it. Alright, so now it's time to solder these guys together. So I'm just going to tin up the wire and the, and the uh, sh braided shield. We've got a little flux on both of them. The goal is to just keep the um, solder at the tip so that this little uh, nubbin stays flexible. Ideally, you shouldn't touch the solder to the tip. You should let the tip heat up the item you're trying to flow the solder to. Sometimes it needs a little solder to get things going. See if we can stick them together. It's usually better if you have one of those third hand tools. But you gotta go with what you got. Which to me is painter's tape. Yeah, the goal is a little nubby. You want a good solid connection but that stays flexible. So I'll put a little piece of uh, heat shrink over that after I get through all of them. So yeah, a little heat, heat shrink. Um, ideally, you just want them to lie flat um, so that if the bundle has to go back together, you don't want them chafing. Um, if you have little nubbies. Kind of cut them off. Mine's going to be inside this enclosure, so I'm not too worried about it. So here's the Rocks Tech Easy Gland 16. So there's 16 entry points for cables here. So there are eight of those blocks. Um, I'm essentially in the process of getting everything in here and I can show you a little easier on the bench. So these are the one of eight modules and I've already taken out some of the leaves. So these, these little uh, leaves come out. Um, and then they have uh, a lubricant uh, from made in Sweden, some natural grease. It's a bit like, um, it's probably thicker than chapstick, but it has simultaneously a natural and unnatural lubrosity to it. Uh, so anyway, they uh, simply want you to lube the, the rack itself and then, then um, get the gap down to 0.1 to 1 millimeter. And, uh, yeah, they don't want you to have an unbalanced number of, of leaves, at least more than one. And then you lubricate all, all the sides of the, you know, the block. And then this is sort of where I am. They, they mentioned this, uh, this pre-compression tool not included. Anyway, I don't have that. And then at the end, there's this little wedge that you uh, lock down with an Allen wrench that squeezes the whole block together and supposedly you should see some lubricant squeeze out. So where I am right now is essentially I've got most of the cables in there and uh, I'm now actually having a hard time I don't have enough space to to get the last block in and I think it's because I've left too much space in some of my uh, uh, cable blocks there. So I think I'll either have to try to compress it in some other manner or just go back and take a few leaves out. 
So that's sort of the cost benefit there of this system. I think if you if you were making a commercial box, you pretty much I I don't know. I think you would have to go with uh, surface mounted connectors. I think uh, CNC router parts as well as others tend to go that route. And I think if I were making a commercial box, that's what I would do too. <laughs> so there's my uh, my version of the compression tool. Uh, I took out a few leaves uh, here and there, and it seems to fit quite a bit better. And I'm getting some squeeze out. So let's see if I can get the last one in there. So yeah, pretty much I'd describe this as a greased pig contest. So these little thing blocks are so slippery, and you know, the stuff gets everywhere. And so I tried to load it from the bottom uh, and then fill the last one at the top. So that just does not work. So basically I had to come back here to the center and take these cables out take these blocks out and then try to uh, squish both up and down and then wedge them in there. And now I'm going to try to feed the, the cable back in. Bottom line is it's a lot harder than it seems. So yeah, they're all in there now, which is great. Uh, I have two empty spots, which are intentional. Um, these are my four uh, stepper motor cables. And then this is the power for the spindle cooling. And then these six are sensors. And then these two, this is e-stop and fault. And then this is the spindle up, up by itself. I tried to keep the, the noisy wires, as I call them, the, the stepper motors and the spindle away from the sensors as much as I could. Uh, so I guess my critique of this is that it's a lot harder to get these in than I expected. Um, and one of the reasons at least I had set out was that this was hopefully going to be a mechanism that I could quickly, you know, install, you know, new cables in the future. And while I obviously have two spots here, this is not something, it's like, I do not want to take these out ever. That was so unpleasant. Um, it's like, yeah, greased pig contrast. So, I don't know, these things are hard, hard to work with, and they're, it's difficult to cram these in here. And so, anyway, uh, perhaps if I did it every day, I'd get a lot better at it, but I don't know. There's some things you don't want to get good at. Got to get the, <laughs> the satisfaction of the final squeeze. Urgh. Squeeze. So here I finished wiring up all the proximity sensors and I have one last uh, wire here which is from the Z touch plate and that's gonna go into that top top one there I got all my uh, shields attached to my grounding block the CNC router parts doesn't publish a wiring diagram for this little guy um, so I just needed to do some testing so it it uses the same shielded cable as the other, so there's four conductors, white, brown, blue, and black. And this is what I've uh, determined. The brown and the white wire are attached to nothing. And the blue has continuity with the magnet, this little guy. And the black has continuity with the case. And so essentially when you're touching your, you know, your... You attach this magnet to the, your spindle and then the tool touches the plate, thus uh, pulling your input pin to ground. So pretty much works just like the proximity sensors with the absence of the need for any power. So it's good to know. All right, so that's pretty much all the wiring done. Yeah, it took pretty much a full, I don't know, Full day, basically five hours here on on the floor to do that. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll we'll test on her. Sweet.